Teresa Rogers, Teresa McCannon's mother. <clears throat> she said, thank you for the food and your prayers. God bless you, Patricia and family. Continue to pray for her, talk to her the other day on the phone. Uh, just remember her, she's been very sick in the hospital. Said she's doing a lot better. Just pray for her. I think she's up in Virginia there with her son. I believe where she was at. Just remember her and prior. Remember all these. It's lost loved ones and these that's sick right now. Continue to pray for the young lady April down in from Wyatt and Blank Gainesville. They're gonna they're gonna reduce the ventilator on her a little bit today to see how she reacts to that, how she does. So please lift her up and cry. Is there any other prior requests here this morning that we need to bring for the Lord this time? Thank Remember Miss Kitty? Remember Frank? Pray for him. Unspoken. Unspoken. Pray for the law. Remember our young people. Let's remember this. Let's really pray for Frank. I'm concerned about him not being here this morning. Let's remember him. We had a surprise party for Frank Wednesday night. He turned 86 years old. Sure did. We had a happy church backyard. Just a wonderful time. They got the singing. He enjoyed that so much, didn't he? Did he got to the true blessing? Oh, Frank loves to sing for the Lord. He sure does. Will you pray for him? Whatever's going on, with Frank, right now, remember it. He comes last night. He, he said that he didn't sleep the night. He said, not about my knee, but he said, that the church is here for nothing about me to give me a party. How about that? He said, home for me, so he said, I, I didn't sleep the bed all night. He didn't remember Frank. He didn't sleep the night. Pray for old Frank, please. He's uh, really, I guess he's probably about her. Oh, it's a member right now, ain't it? Amen. Any others here this morning before we pray? Any other prayer requests? Remember this? All our young people here at church, boy, it was a true blessing to see our Sunday school classes full this morning. That was a blessing. Sure did enjoy that. Pray for our people, some of our people, that they can get back to church. They can say get back in here. I'm not going to say anything for somebody who's scared to death of, uh, of this and they're staying at home, don't never go nowhere. But when you see people everywhere else, down at the ball stadium and down at the restaurant, and then they want to come to church, there's something wrong right there. Amen. So let's pray for our people. That's right. They'll get back to church, amen. Now somebody that's just sitting in their basement, and they're, I ain't leaving, and, and, they don't, and they're scared, I ain't going to say a word. I'm going to pray that God would help them because I understand. I mean, they've been captivated with fear. But when you do everything else, go everywhere else, but you just lost it. And it's so easy. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I was saying, it's so easy to get out of church. You take one or two services and then you just get not in a habit and you get out of church. So easy. And that's what's happened. A lot of our people, they just got out of church. So let's pray for them. Remember them in pray. Pray for our churches. Pray for our preacher. Told him they start revival tonight at Tilly's Creek up in Cullaway. Remember him in prayer. Or Will and I'm preaching Thursday night at a drug but facility in Wiresville. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Pray for that meeting down there. Pray that God would give me the words to speak to those people that's had their lives affected by drugs. Any others this morning? Pray today for salvation here at the house of God. I'd like to see somebody say, truly born again. I'm talking about a true experience with the Lord Jesus Christ that they'll never get over. I'm telling you, true salvation is life changing. It's not something that you get saved today and you're over it tomorrow or next week. Right. When Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit moves inside of you, 
Your life is different forever. Amen. You'll never be the same. Amen. It is so good. I got to, we got to go on that fire hunt yesterday down in Georgia and we was talking to one of those game wardens over there. And he said something about we was telling him that we was going to be doing some camping. And he said, well, don't you just be a drinking over there at that camp. And I said, you don't got to worry about that. I said, I don't drink. I said, I used to. I said, I used to do a lot of drugs. I said, but then I got saved. Born again, I said, I ain't had to drop alcohol or drugs in my body in over 12, or nearly 12 years. That's what I told him. Boy, whenever I said that about getting born again, he just looked glued on me. Boy, he just looked away like that, and I thought, conviction. That quick. Amen. Look at that, man. Yes. Amen. So I hope and pray that God, every day, He can use you. Yesterday morning, son, God kept praying. There's 10 or 12 of us on the side of the road. Grown men. And they was talking a conversation. And God just kept telling me, pray with these men. Pray. And it's for daylight and we stand out there. And I said, man, we need to pray. Boy, that man jerked them hats off. Right there on the side of the road. On top of Blood Mountain. Praise God, we bowed our heads and went to talking to the Creator of all creation. Boy, oh, how precious that was. That man that come in that was all the way in from Savannah, Georgia, he shook my hand with tears in his eyes yesterday before they left. And he said, I want to thank you for this good day and this hunt and us getting to kill these buyers. He said, but more than anything, he said, I want to thank you for praying with us this morning. And the words that you said, he said, that made more of an impression on me than anything. You never know what you do. If God's telling you to do something, so many times we fight the Holy Spirit. God's telling you to talk to a family member, to talk to a friend. It's hard. Our flesh don't want to do that. Some of the hardest people, there's been times around my family, God's been saying, mention me, say something with me. It's so hard. The devil, the flesh will fight you. But we need to learn to always do what the Spirit of God would have us to do. Because what God's bid you to do is always right. Amen. We love you today. Pray for this service. Pray that God will have His way. Pray that God will touch hearts and speak to His people. Right now, everybody that will, let's come forward and gather around this altar. Go to the Lord and pray. In a moment, we want to get the choir up here. And I want you to ride back and sing for Jesus this morning. I pray that you sing with the voices of angels. And glorify and give praise to God here today. We'll try our best to preach and do what the Lord would have us to do. Father God, as we fall down before you this morning, God, we lift up our voice, God. Lord, as humbly as we know how. Father, I know it, God, today that without you that we are nothing. Father, we come to you, I pray, God, for this service today. Pray, God, that your will would be done. Seeking your place, desiring your presence, praying and longing, God, for your touch. Pray, God, to see somebody saved, to see a life changed, but to see, God, the heavens open and your spirit manifested in this place. Lord, I ask you, God, here for this little life. Lord, I pray a special touch on life games today. I pray, God, that you put your spirit on me, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that you touch him with power from all time. Lord, I love you and I thank you, thank you. God, you've been better than good to me and far better than I've been heard. Lord, you are a friend and stick as closer than a brother. And you are a present help in a time of trouble. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. God, beside you there is no other. And as Jesus said in John 15 and 5, without you we can do nothing. Father, we bow on our face before you this morning, acknowledging your presence. Pray to God that you'll move in our lips toward, and that we do nothing, God, to hinder you. Oh, God, from a saving somebody, from a blessing somebody, from a teaching of God. I pray today, Father, that your will would be done in this place. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll touch our young people. Lord, I pray, God, that the power of the Holy Spirit would move in our midst. I pray, God, for every 
preacher this morning that's been called by your name that's standing in the pulpit. Let your anointing be appreciated in you. I pray for every church God that's truly assembled God in your name today. Oh God that should bless them. Father, I come before you seeking God. Oh God of heaven, Lord. Save some old lost sinner today. Lord, we don't believe it'll be long until a king just comes after us. But God, we want to be faithful to serve until he does. Father, I thank you and I love you and praise you. God, you've been better than good to me. And far better than I deserve. Lord, we know God today, Lord, that we oh God in this old place for nothing. So we know there is demons in us and demons in the world. Father, I just ask this morning. Lord, everything we do, the honor of the glory and the praise and the honor of your family. Lord, we love you. God, we ask you these things in Jesus' name.
and trying not to, you know, not quite wait. We're trying to wait. Praise God, we we'll say, I go over here, he's moving around. Right. Amen. You ain't got around now. Oh, I'm going to get water. 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 And I thought, what? I'm not going to make the same thing. Lord, we're moving right now. What the Spirit feels so good. Boy, I just want to say, if you're here and you're unsaved, boy, I tell you, God ain't already speaking to your heart. I pray that He'll just move on you. Amen. And if God's a dealing with you, come this hall. You pray. If you've got a need in your life, face something going on that nobody don't know about, just bring that thing and give it to God. Pour your heart out. Pray to the Lord this morning. If you've got something in your life you need help with, it's bigger than you are. You've been fighting and struggling with it. Maybe it's a temptation of the flesh, a, a sin. Maybe it's something you've got here and nobody don't know nothing about. Just give that thing to God today and ask Him to help you with it. If you need to pray, just come pray. Boy, if you need to be saved, don't put it off. I pray you'd run to this altar. I've had this song for her to sing on my heart. Boy, I, this song says, do you know how you can it feel? And I'm glad that I know how it feels. Amen. Amen. So you listen to this. Bless her, Lord. You
one got word, and I, I've never felt that clean in all my life. And the Spirit of the Lord, I, and it was just like I was floating all day. If you've never been saved, you're missing out. Amen. You know, this world's in yeah. bad place. Bless her, Lord. Lord. <laughs> and you know you want to go to heaven and not spend eternity in place. And all that. You never regret it. That's how I've never been sorry. That's one thing. I've never been sorry when I got on my knees. The devil fought me. I come to revival of it. And when I got back home, I got in a conviction. But he fought me. And I never knelt in that bed. And asked the Lord to save my soul. And I've never been the same Amen. since. I'm Amen. still excited about the Lord. I'm still excited and fighting too. Yes. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number uh, 15. I, this goes along with my preacher Sunday school. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I've used that scripture and preached the measure several times on how's your fruit taste. Amen. Amen. Sometimes an apple looks good on the inside. You buy it in it, there might be a big worm in there on the or it looks good on the outside, might be buy it on the inside, you know. How's your fruit taste today? How are you giving praise to God? Boy, the Lord, the spirits are moving and a demon. We feel conviction at the same time. Somebody here needing to move and come. And somebody needs to be saved. God's a devil with you and a draw in you. And you're fighting against that. You know down in your heart you've never truly been saved. If God's Spirit speaking to you, you know all you got to do is get up and run to this altar and confess your sin and call on His name and He'll save you. He said He would. He said He'd in no wise cast them out to come unto Him. So here today, we're about to sing another song that goes right along with that last that she just sung. I'm a child of the King. This is one of my favorites. I'll tell you, I love it. And if you're not a child of the King, you need to be saved. If you need to pray about anything else, don't you let that hear. You come and pray. While God's a-moving, you mind the Lord. Bless the Lord.
There's a lot of deception going on in the world today. Yes, we'll find out about life. God help us. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Boy, I tell you, we've got so much uh, fighting amongst the church and so much Christians and everybody says, well, this is right and that's right. Let me tell you what's right. Amen. This right here is what's right. Amen. 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 And many shall come and many shall just buy or take anything. Don't line up this right here. I'm wrong. And this is still right. Amen. Thought. I'd say it ain't. If you buy or take anything, don't lie. I'm wrong and this is still right. Amen. Amen. Many shall come and deceive. They shall say, I'm Christ. They shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, the Bible says. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Amen. Jesus really wants to stress to us in these teachings on the signs of the end of the times about the deception that's going to be going on in the world. And boy, I believe that we're there today. Amen. I believe that in all my heart. Yes. Man, so many people's teaching so many different things. Mm. I'm telling you, they're coming up with new doctrines and new theologies every day. Coming up with stuff that 50 years ago, 20 years ago was unheard of. This ain't changed. Amen. It's still there. It's yeah. still the same. When people's coming up with stuff, I'm telling you, you better be very careful. There, there's a lot of deception going on out there. I believe I'll just stick with the stuff and stick with my Lord Jesus and just go with what's worked for the last 2,000 years. Amen. Paul preached it, I'll preach it. Jesus taught it, I'll teach it. I'm going to stick with the Word of God. Now listen to this. Verse number 12. And because iniquity shall abound, what that means, don't you? Rampant sin, willful sin. It's it's everywhere. Everywhere you look, people are just sinning. They don't care. Nothing's ashamed of anymore. When thirty years ago things were kept in the closet, nothing. Sin is boastfully done today. Amen. And you know what I'm seeing even here in Grand County? People won't take a stand against it no more. We accept it. We applaud it. Oh, it's wonderful. Let's have a parade. Oh, let's just let's we can't we can't be for sin. We've got to stand against sin. But we're living in the day that iniquity is abounding. It's getting more and more and people won't stand against it. People are getting meaner. And the Bible teaches in the last days that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. It's every day you hear about a young girl going missing. One kidnapped. A body being found. I mean, it's just awful. The world that we're living in, the wickedness that's taking place, the things that are accepted, the things that are publicized. TV is pushing things down our children's throat. Video games are pushing things down their throat. They, I read a statistic the other day, and it was unreal at the murders that a 16-year-old had seen through television, movies, and video games by the time they were 16 years old. And the more they see it, the more easily it becomes accepted. And we see things. We watch good TV programs, but there are commercials that come in there that are pushing the agenda of the liberal world today upon us. Iniquity is abounding in the hearts of many. Amen, Amen brother. The world is getting worse and worse. But the Bible says this. 
And I'll read the last three verses, but this is what I want to focus on. The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be shaved, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Verse number 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I want to try this morning to preach on how badly that we need love in our hearts. How badly that we do. God help me. I fall short and I fail on this and I'm praying that God will touch me and help me in this message. Father, as we bow our head before you today, we thank you as humbly as we know how. We thank you for the good service we've already had, the good spirit we felt. For those that have used the altar, but God, we pray a special prayer. For those that have sat there under the unction of the Spirit, that you've been nudging to get out of their seat and come to the altar, whether it's for salvation or any other thing, and they preached and breathed your Spirit, I pray, God, that you would pour a double portion out of all of them right now. I pray that the preaching of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost will get a hold of them in this place. I pray to bless our church and our church family, every home. Oh, God, I pray that it would be blessed. I pray, God, to the extended families of sweet dumb. And Lord, we pray a special prayer right now for Frank James, God, our elder, our deacon, our teacher, our choir leader. Lord, how we love him. And God, we know right now he needs a touch from you. God, I'm praying for your ministering angels to go where he is. And for the Holy Ghost, God, to, to comfort him and help him. Father, I pray, God, for this service today and the remainder, the singing, God, that you would bless. Lord, I love you. I thank you and I praise you. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that you would move in the midst and the altar call. And God, those that need help will receive it. Bless this, God. I pray, let me say only what you'd have me to and nothing else. Lord, we love you. God, we ask you to save a soul. Save a young person. Lord, that they may not get out in this world. That they may live for you all their life. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, he tells us here that because iniquity shall abound. That word shall, anytime you see it in your Bible, it means that the same as if it's already happened. It's, it's a must. It's necessary. You can mark her down. You can write her down. It's going to happen. Jesus was saying in the last days, iniquity is going to abound. I'm telling you, the devil, I believe, is more loose right now than he's ever been. I believe he's working double time. I believe he's working overtime. The flesh is weaker than it's ever been. How can you say that, preacher? I'll tell you why. Because the church is weaker than it's ever been. Because the Christians are weaker than they've ever been. I'm going to be honest with you. Hey man, we won't stand for anything anymore. And I heard an old song say one time, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We laid a, a petition at the back in the front of the church about a year, a year and a half ago for all the church members that would be willing to stand against alcohol coming into our county. There's probably 150, 160 here that morning. 70 people signed a petition. And one of those called me before dark and said, hey preacher, if you don't care, would you take my name off that petition? I said, I'll be glad to do it. I'm telling you, we're living in a day and time where people won't stand for anything. Honey, if you're going to stand for something, you better stand for what this book says. You better stand for what's right. Whose side are you on this morning? Are you on the Lord's side? Are you standing for good and standing for right? Are you living for God? Are you trying your best? God knows your heart. God knows my heart. I want to encourage you this morning to do the very best that you can. Amen. Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these things right now that's going on that ain't no good. Amen. Right here in our county last weekend. Now they're going to vote on alcohol in November. Preacher, you're not even be talking about that. I'm going to talk about it. It's going to be a town vote. There was a 50 year old man bought some 15 year old young and some alcohol last weekend. You think we need it more readily available in our county? You think no. we need more of it? No. You're wrong. Get right with God. Amen. 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 My Bible says that wine is a mocker 
uh, and strong drink is raging, and whosoever does deceive thy life is not wise. Alcohol ain't no good. I've seen the effects of it. I know what it'll do to you. Them youngins got a hold of that alcohol last weekend. And I'll tell you what happened. Hey, this ain't good, but I was told I could tell it. I ain't going to say names. And I'm going to tell it. They beat one little girl up. Beat her till her eyes was black. Had sex with another little girl. Fifteen years old. Boy, we need more alcohol, don't we? No, we don't. We need more God. We need more Christians that will stand up and say alcohol's wrong. We need more wives that will pray for their husbands to quit drinking. I don't care if they just drink a beer or two. Your children are watching it. I said in a local restaurant, yeah, I know there's alcohol in our county, but I don't want it in angles, amen. I don't want it sold by the case. You can go in under loopholes and sit down and drink a beer with your meal. You carry a bottle of wine in. I don't like it. I watched their family and they didn't even know I was sitting there. And they walked in and ordered their supper. And there's a little boy about that high. And his daddy ordered a Bud Light. And that little boy looked up and they said, I want what my dad's got. And they said, no son, you can't have that. Why not? Why can't, why can't a child have it? It's alright for daddy. Iniquity is abounding. We marry homosexuals now today. Oh my. People that used to sit on the pew in this church, and I'm not bashful about it. They condone it. Oh. And act like it's all right. I'll stand against it, amen. 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 But I'll stand against your pride too. I will. I'll stand against a filthy mind. I'll stand against lying. People said, preacher, all you want to do is preach against homosexuality. All you want to do is preach against adultery and fornication. I'll preach against every sin that this book teaches is wrong. Amen. 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 If it hurts you, if it hurts me, or if it hurts whoever. Right. My daughter gets out and goes to living in it, I'll still preach against fornication. I'll tell her straight eyeball to eyeball that it's wrong and she needs to get right with God. That's what I'll do. Yes. If my daughter gets to social drinking after college, I'll tell her eyeball to eyeball. Honey, it's wrong and you better quit. Hey man, our former president made a statement that I love. He said, you and he had a brother that was a severe alcoholic. I believe my even died, I'm sure. He said, if you never take the first drink, you'll never become an alcoholic. Amen. Praise God, amen. If you never take the first... Hey, iniquity is abounding. We need some people that will stand for right and stand for wrong. Amen. Now here's where we're getting to the message. And I tried my best to teach the two older teenagers that we had this morning. We talked about the spirit of meekness. Now here's where we've got to be so careful. I do. We all do. We're dealing with a lost and dying world out there. Why is them people living like that, preacher? Why are they acting like that? Why did I live like that? Because I was lost. I didn't know no better. And there's a certain way you're going to win. And you ain't through being hateful or arrogant or mean. It's going to be through love. And you know you can stand for what's right. You still do it in love. You can stand for what's right and still be me. I'm reminded of our Savior Jesus sitting on the way of Jacob's well in Samaria. There's a woman come to him for water that day. She'd had five husbands. And she was living with a man that was not her husband. Now he told her what she was doing. He convinced her of her sin. She was convicted. But he died in love. He changed her life by that day. He didn't bless her out or let her have it. Sometimes that's where I fall so short. Because iniquity is about me. People that you've seen for so long doing the same things and they never get right. And you get frustrated. And then there's people, even your church people as a pastor, 
And you just want to see them come out of something so bad. You want to see them be blessed so bad. And sometimes you just want to get them and shake them and say, why don't you do this? Why don't you be faithful? And you want to do that. That's what you want to do. Iniquity shall bind the heart, but the love of many shall wax cold. We can't let our love die. I remember a woman in John chapter 8 that they brought to Jesus. And they said this woman has been caught in the very act of adultery. They said, the law says to stone her and kill her. But what do you say? They were trying. They was wanting to set our Savior up. In His wisdom, the Bible teaches that He stood down and He began to write in the sand. And He said, Let ye that has no sin cast the first stone. He raised up and one by one they began to walk away. He turned around and looked at the woman and no doubt she was guilty. I'm going to say she probably was. I don't know. He said, woman, where's your accusers at? They ain't got any. They're gone. He said, neither do I accuse you. But he said, go and sin no more. <coughs> You've seen an encounter with Jesus is life changing. When people truly find Jesus, it will change your life so much. But we've got to have patience. And sometimes that is one of the hardest things to do. Sometimes our love waxes cold. Sometimes our love dies out. And then there's some folk that say they're saved. And I'm telling you, I just don't believe they've got it. How can you say that, preacher? Because my Bible teaches me in the book of 1 John that we know K-N-O-W that we have passed from death unto life Amen. because we love our brethren. And it also says that if you cannot love your brother in whom you have seen, how can you love God? And whom you have not seen. And we've got folk today that are hunting around so bitter and hateful and mean and complaining and they're just all the time, oh, I hate old so and so. And I hate this one and I hate that one. The love of Christ has surely not yet been perfected in you. He's maybe working on you, He's maybe working in you. But my friend, the love of Christ will perfect you. I have had people that have, and I'm not boasting, I hate to even use myself in messages, but sometimes it's the best illustration I know. But I've had people that have done me so wrong and hurt me and broke my heart and offended me. I've had people who have financially hurt me. People that I've entrusted to do things that have cost me thousands of dollars and didn't do what they said and never got my money back. But yet, I cannot hate that person because the God of heaven that's bigger than I am and bigger than they are lives inside of me and His commandment is to love. Amen. He tells us in His Word, love thy neighbor as thy soul. He says to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. To love God. And He said if you'll do these two things. He said if you'll love God and you'll love your neighbor, you won't got to worry about nothing else. Friend, if you love God, you're not going to sin against this body. We might mess up. But you'll not do it repeatedly. You'll repent when you do. Amen. I fall short. But I have to repent. And if you love your neighbor, I don't care who they are, what they've done, you've got to forgive them. It's necessary. We are the light. And if a lost and dying world can't see Jesus in us, 
Yeah. On Facebook to the Word, let me be first to stand inside. I'm not against anybody that's homosexual. I'm not against anybody that's been divorced or living in open adultery. I'm not against a thief. I'm not against a murderer. I'm for them. I want them to get saved. I love them. But at the same time, so many Christians have such a hard time finding that place to worry about Stand against sin, but still love people. I see it one of two ways. I see people that stand against sin boldly and are so mean that they're just hateful. And it comes off as they hate people. And then I see people that are so open to sin in the name of love that they don't stand against anything. And you can't be that way either. You've got to stand for something but still be filled with love. And sometimes I'm going to be honest. It's hard to do. Jesus told us right here in the Word that this would be one thing that we would have to deal with in the end of Well, the true telltale signs I see of a Christian is I see them and they get done wrong and they forgive. It's not a suggestion. It's necessary. We must forgive as Christians. It's hard to forgive. I learn sometimes. I become wiser. There's people that maybe down the road I don't have dealings with. But I still love them. Sometimes, in the name of Jesus, in the name of love, it would do us good to learn to hold our tongues and keep our peace. God help me to do better. God forgive me where I fail you. God forgive me for not having the patience with ones that are just like I used to be. You'd find if anybody had the patience with an old sinner, it'd be me. And I fail at this so often. Blessing. Church, I promise you, I beg you, I plead with you this morning, don't let your love wax cold. But yet, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. I'm pleading with you this morning. Pray like you've never prayed before. I don't care if your life is so busy and you run to work and you run to ball practice and you run to this show and that show and you do all these things. Please, going down the road to work in the morning, going to church, if you don't get somewhere in a closet or on an altar on your knees of a day, cut the radio off. Cut the serious FM off. Cut the XM off. Cut it off. And talk to Jesus going down the road. Yes. But please, find your prayer off. Do something. The reason our love is getting cold. God, help us. Our relationship with God is not what it should be. There might be some that can boldly stand up this morning and say, my relationship with God is exactly what it should be. I'm going to read this scripture and I promise I'll be done. I'm not one of them Christians this morning that can say that. I can look you all in the eyes and say I try my best. Are there areas I could improve on? Yes, they are. Pray for your preacher. Pray for your pastor. I want to do that. I want to be better. I would love to get better control of my tongue sometime. Maybe I ought to just stay away from the ball game. It seems like every time I go on a Friday night, I get fired up. I do! In a fleshly way. God help us to do better. 
First Corinthians chapter 13. You can turn now if you want to. You don't have to. I'm going to read this and I'll be done. You have to get a song. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, Paul said, and have not charity. That word means love. Anywhere I read that word in this scripture, it's going to mean love. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity or love, I am nothing. He says, if I ain't got love, I'm nothing. I try my best preaching love. There's been times I've preached in the flesh. I know. You've been up there, buddy. But I love people. There's been times where some people have not had enough spirit to know that God was talking to them. Either. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profiteth me nothing. He's saying I can do all these great things. I can feed the poor. I can prophesy. I can do some wonderful things. But if I ain't got love, it don't mean a thing. Boy, we ought to preach in love. We ought to teach in love. We ought to serve in love. We ought to sing in love. I'm telling you, if you're in love with Jesus, I mean, you're just right back, shut your eyes, not think about who's a listening or who's a looking, and you sing to the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. Amen. Charity, love, suffereth long. It is kind. If, if charity, if it not, charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It doth not besave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. Well, that goes good with 24 and 12, don't it? If you've got love in you, you can't rejoice in this willful sin that's going on in this world. I'm telling you, you love somebody, but you cannot pat somebody on their back and condone them and sin. Some people don't like me for that reason. If they'd be honest, they'd just have to say, the preacher said the truth and I don't like it. But people won't be that honest. They want to act like the preacher's mean. I'm going to say, he don't care about us, no one. The truth is, a preacher that won't tell you the truth don't care about you. A preacher that won't preach your children the truth don't care about you. And some of us that have been through some stuff in life, you surely don't want your children to go down the road you went down. I'm telling you, I want my children to know the truth. I want them to hear the truth. I want them to know what's wrong and what's right. Plead with them. Oh, teach. Mm, God help us. Amen. I can't even remember where I laugh. It rejoiceth not in the truth. Or it rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Bareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Love ain't never failed one time. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. They used to speak in tongues. You know why? It was a sign of the Holy Ghost. People could look and say, this person's doing something they've never done before. People used to prophesy. It was a sign of the Holy Ghost. But when that which is perfect is come, right here it is, the good old Word of God, it's come. We don't need that prophecy anymore. It's already been prophesied. We don't need them tongues anymore. Amen. That, it's, that which is perfect has come. We've got it. We've got the complete Word of God. I'm holding it in my hand. I've handled it. Here it is. This is what we need. This is what will save your children. This is what will save your family. This is what will save your loved ones. This is what we'll be judged by. And this is what we need to live by. I don't know how preachers get up here and hope they not be excited. Hey, times I, I swear I think I'm just going to 
say a few words and teach a little bit. When I get a hold of this and it gets a hold of me, honey, it does something to me. I can't explain it. We've got the perfect, complete Word of God. That's what He's saying right there. Go home and study on verses 8 through 10. We've got it. He said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I also am I known. And now abide us faith, hope, and charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. It's love. He said love is greater than faith. And love is greater than hope. Praise God. Don't let your love wax cold. And if it has this morning, acknowledge that. Use this altar. Swallow your pride. Get right with God. Hey man, bow your head where you're sitting and talk to Jesus and say, Lord, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been hurt so bad. And Lord, I have to be honest. My love's are getting a little cold. But Lord, I pray You'd renew me and revive me and restore me. Praise God, don't let your love get cold, church. Amen. I feel like I've tried my best to preach to you. That's exactly what God gave me. Now what you do with it, now I'll fill in my head tonight. I will. But what you do with it is entirely up to you. I love you. I mean that all my heart. If I didn't, I wouldn't get up here and try to preach. I wouldn't keep pressing through and keep trying. But I love you. I love you. I love you. I mean that. But I'll tell you what, it sure is this hard to preach and preach and preach. And to say no change. God help us to be better, to do better, to not keep getting farther away. I'm telling you these last two weeks, Katie, Katie, Latricia, who else is Sunday school teacher? I'm on my own way. Who? Tamara and little Hamlin. Son, man, seeing these Sunday school classes, boy, I'm telling you, that's what Amen. So much. So much. Gosh, that means so much. Getting out to church. Bringing your children. I promise you it's the most important thing you'll do all week long. Getting your kids in the house of God. I don't care if you mess up this week. I don't care if you fall short. Keep coming. Get your kids out to the house of God. Amen. Keep the Lord from Amen. Keep putting him first and he'll bless you for it. Stand to your feet this morning if you have a need. My, my, my. Help our love to not wax cold. Help it to get stronger. Let's go ahead and sign. Father, Lord, we find our head, God. Lord, I pray.
Put that fire in your heart. He put that fire. 
Kids, we love you and you have a great day. God bless you. Please remember Frank and Bryce. 